Hey, everybody. Welcome back to The Pursuit. Jeff Hutchin here with John Sporov. And uh, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into the Lord's Prayer. If you joined us last week, we uh, we just stepped our foot into the pool. You thought, I was gonna, you thought I was going to go somewhere else with that, didn't you? Yeah. You stepped your foot right in, in it. In, a, in the pool. You're dipping your toe dipping in the, the pool. Dipping, dipping the toe. dipping the toe. We're is gonna it gonna put cold? Our foot is it in. hot? Is it right? It's, it's feeling hot. It is. And I think we're going to go up to the ankle today. Well, and the one thing we know it's not is lukewarm, because what did Jesus say about lukewarm? Spit it out. Yeah, it's not it's good. It's not good. But before we go there, who's our sponsor today, Jeff Hutchin? I thank you for asking. I'm glad you did that, yeah. because it, we'd be remiss for not mentioning our good friends over at Trinity Team Real Estate. Our friends, Eric Fritzke and the team up there, they're doing an amazing job. Just was talking to Eric just the other day. Business is blown up, and if you live in Colorado and if you have a pulse, you understand that real estate is going crazy right now. So you need mm-hmm. a team on your side that is willing to and is excited to work hard for you, and that's what the group does over at Trinity Team. Family-owned, faith-based organization, they would love to sit down with you to figure out what your real estate needs might look like. It might be an investment. It might be uh, some HOA um, stuff management. Believe it or yeah, not, they do that. They do that. But um, you know what they do in between uh, their work in the real estate market? Tell me, John. One of the things that they do is Eric leads a Bible study, and many of those guys over there that are part of that organization yep. actually use some of this content as well to just help their you know tracking through Scripture and everything. So they are not just sponsoring this episode, but they're going through Matthew chapter six along with us. So. What's up to the guys out there that uh, from the Trinity team that are doing their Bible They're fully study? committed. They are. They're, They're all fully in. committed. They're all, all in, in on this stuff. They are. And I hope you were encouraged by last week's message as we, we began to present um, the Lord's Prayer. And let's just summarize briefly for, the, for those maybe that didn't see it or just to kind of get everybody back up to speed. What was Jesus when, you know, first of all, it's important to look at context, right? Every time we look at the Word, we want to make sure we understand context. Yeah. We've got to remember the context in which Jesus shares the Lord's Prayer. And he just came off of, as he does quite often in this portion of Scripture in the Gospels, he's, he's on the Pharisees pretty hard. He is. He is and destroying religion. So what I is he say. what do you recall what Jesus was kind of addressing prior to sharing yeah. with everyone the Lord's prayer? He what said he something about? to the effect of I mean and I would imagine that that the way that Jesus interacted he probably had just observed this happening. Somebody there that was over kind of out in the streets with all the religious garb on, um, out loud, praying, interceding, saying things that seem holy and righteous. And he says, you know, you see that right there? That's actually not how to pray. Mm. That guy is praying to be seen and heard. And he has his reward. That's right. His reward is look around you. Look at everyone gawking at him yeah. and saying, oh, you know, get out of the the, the way of the holy man, right? Um, a very temporal re- reward, recognition maybe is his reward. Um, but when you pray, I'm, by the way, I'm going to show you how to pray, but before you do, let me just tell you, that's not the setting. The mm-hmm. setting is in the, the quiet place, it's in the secret place. Mm-hmm. Um, and go lock the door, and the, your father who hears you in secret will reward you openly. Yeah. And then he starts into the template uh, of and I, you know, I'm referring, if you, the word template may seem kind of strange for me to just spring on people if they didn't see the last episode. So go watch that. But it is the outline. It is the approach, um, that, that Jesus, and here's what occurred to me, man. I was actually driving in this morning thinking about this because I was thinking about, we only got through eight words, by the way, last, Mm -hmm. last time, uh, praying this manner, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. And I think that's where we stopped. Mm -hmm. Right. And I felt like I could spend an hour on the word hour. And this is what hit me. He wasn't saying to them, them, the disciples, when you pray, go pray like this, because here's the outline that you should use that I don't use. This is the outline that he uses. Mm. He's a man of prayer. Jesus was. He was always engaged with the Father. And this is what he Mm. did. Yeah. Great observation. So he's inviting us into a rich experience. So every time you see Jesus, he went out on the, you know, up to the mountain and prayed, and then he did such and such, right? And he says, "I only do what, what I see my father go, what I see my father do in prayer." He's inviting us into that experience. Yeah, the same thing. Yep, he's inviting them into this level of intimacy, and in the fact that God says, "I want to reveal to you the mysteries of heaven." 
the mysteries of this world. That's what I desire to reveal to you. And that, th- think of it, put yourself back in that time frame. For those disciples, that, that had to be mind-blowing revelation, right? Because up to this point, Holy Spirit's still not on the scene. Mm-hmm. They're used to the sacrificial system. Yep. They're used to the, the religious system. These Pharisees and these, these Sadducees and the priests that they keep encountering, that Jesus keeps um, attacking, that's the system they knew. And by the way, that was the system they knew to access God. Mm. Mm-hmm. Now Jesus is saying, I'm going to blow your paradigm and say, no, actually what my Father desires of you is a deep level, deep level of intimacy just like a high priest. And not to correct you on a little word, because I know what you meant, but he didn't just say, this is how my father hears. It, it's like, man, no, you and I are brothers. Yeah. I'm t- yeah. We're talking about our father, yeah. like your father right. and my father That's right. is the same guy. Yeah. And there's something just, it's like, I just feel this overwhelming sense of gratitude around this idea that he's inviting us into an experience that's that only a member of the family can have a joint heir mm-hmm. that he called us and he said, let's go to our father. Let's go to our father in prayer. Yeah. Let me ask you something. Have you ever, and, and I'm genuinely asked this question. I don't know the answer to it. Have you ever prepared for like a, a marathon or anything like that? Have you ever yes. done it, like a triathlon? Tough triathlon or Tear nine. Okay. Yeah. Half okay. marathon. Yeah. So, so, so this is a good example. In preparation for that very difficult event that you were going to put yeah. yourself into, was there any preparation that oh, took gosh. place? Oh, gosh. Holy smokes, yes. What, just off the well, cuff, what kind of stuff did you th- do? So we would do, uh, we go to the, you know this park and we do hit training and all that kind of stuff. But then there was interjected or intermingled um, uh, long runs. So I remember every Saturday we would do a long run that led up to 13 miles. Okay. The actual course itself was like, I want to say a tough motor course is like seven miles. I could be wrong. Somebody's going to correct me out there. But it's not 13. But the point is we were training for a half a marathon knowing we we're going to run a quarter. Okay. Right? So the point of, point of this story and the reason why I asked you this question is in order to participate in this event, it required you to prepare. For and, sure. And it required you to, to do some work in advance in order for you to be positioned and aligned to have any level of success when the actual event took place. Yeah, 100%. Okay? We understand that mindset when it comes to things like that. Yeah. What Jesus is doing, and I'm going to provide us a different paradigm here, what Jesus is doing with the Lord's Prayer, and we talked a little bit about this in our last episode, is he is teaching us, as you use the word outline, he's teaching us how to position ourselves and, and to prepare ourselves and to align ourselves with the Father of Heaven, with the creation of all things, with the Creator of all things. He's saying, I'm going to teach you how to prepare before you step into what we think of typically as prayer mm-hmm. is I'm now going to provide you my list of wants, desires, mm-hmm. fears, worries, and anxieties, right? We, we often think of prayer like we think of Santa Claus, mm-hmm. where I'm going to create a list of things that I desire from you, God. Here they are. Now go make it happen. And if we're really honest with ourselves, that's how a lot of people pray. Yeah. Okay. And God's okay with that. He, he's, I think he's cool enough with that, and he understands us well enough. However, Jesus says, if you want a powerful and effectual prayer, what it requires you to do is to prepare yourself. Yeah. And, and to position yourself and align yourself. Not that you're not going to ask for things later on, because, by the way, Jesus did the same thing. But he's saying the first couple of steps are, first of all, positioning yourself before a holy God. And that's what we talked about in our last episode. He started off with our Father who art in heaven, who is in heaven, right? Mm-hmm. It's that recognition that our God has a perspective that we don't have, mm-hmm. right? Our perspective is so darn limited. And, and we, we ask for what we can see, what we sense, what our, what our situation might suggest. That, that's kind of the framework in which we oftentimes ask God to work. And the cool thing is God understands that. He understands that we have a limited perspective. But what Jesus is modeling here in the first part of this prayer is he's saying, first of all, recognize, position and align yourself to recognize that whatever you're about to ask later on in the prayer is okay, but you first must submit and surrender to the fact that our God has a perspective that we don't have. And whatever he chooses to do at the end of the day is going to be what's best for us Mm -hmm. because he loves us. He's a good father, and he desires to accomplish his purposes through us. Yeah, so no that doubt. first part of that prayer really is about, hey, 
position yourself and align yourself for what, what you're about to step into, and that's the presence of a holy God. Yeah, it, it's there's something about acknowledging who he is and, and moving into the second part of that intro, hallowed be the, your name. That is, again, position alignment is, is totally the right words, but we're recognizing and affirming who he is mm-hmm. in our own hearts and our own spirit. But in doing so, we're also um, getting our, a view of our, ourselves as well, yeah. right? It's acknowledging that he is our father Hallowed is uh, hallowed is His name, and and here we are standing in the in the presence of a Holy God. Who, by the way, you know, sometimes you know, the, the, there's something about this. Our Father in heaven, we know He's in heaven, but I think most people would say, if you just, if if I ask you what nine out of ten people would say on the street about what heaven looks like, I bet it would be sort of this, you know, the cartoon, the the sure. fluffy, you know, sitting in the clouds and really nothing's going on. It's just about maybe some harps and um, and angels worshiping and so forth. But this is transactional. There's the business of heaven that's happening, that's right? Right, and that's going to where we're going to get into when we talk about your kingdom come. You bet. Because there's an aspect of this is saying God is active and He is going about um, working on behalf of people to bring king, the kingdom to this earth. You bet. Because that's ultimately his desire. And again, to go back, and we talked about these things on several occasions, but I want to reiterate it. The story of the Bible, as it begins with the creation, of course, and then we see the fall of Adam and Eve. And what happens in that moment is Adam and Eve gives up intimacy, dominion, mm-hmm. authority, um, amongst other things. But those are the primary things that are given up in that moment when they sin, when they fall short in, in, with Satan. And, and so from that point all the way up until the very last chapter in the book of Revelation, what the story is about is God restoring intimacy, dominion, and authority, provision, protection, blessing, all the things of heaven, restoring those things back to his most favored creation, which is you and I. And so this is another brick that is being, it's a big one. It's a big brick that's being laid on this foundation that God is rebuilding. When Jesus is prophesying to them and saying, here's how you're to pray, and you need to understand this, because the reason why I'm asking you to pray this way is after I leave, and after I fulfill that which my Father has called me to, to die on the cross for the sins of all mankind, that I'm going to send to you my Holy Spirit, now that's going to provide that level of intimacy that I am now experiencing that you will you will soon experience. And and so that's why it's important you understand the outline of this. And he says, mm-hmm. my father, he's in heaven. He's got a perspective that we don't have. The second part is you said his name is hallowed, meaning his name is holy. Holy defined as being set apart. Our God is different than anything else ever was and ever will be. He's saying our God is perfect. He's holy. He's set apart. And you need to understand that he loves you deeply, and he wants what's best for you. More than you even think you want for yourself, your father wants for you. And so that's the way the prayer starts. It's all about positioning of the heart. Jesus Mm -hmm. is saying we must position our heart properly before we step into the present or as we step in the presence of our holy God, to use your words. And then we're going to talk about um, three words. The next three words <laughs> in the prayer. Yeah. In verse 10. This is Matthew 6, chapter or chapter 6, verse 10. And he just simply says this, your kingdom come. Huh. By the way, that's a complete phrase. There's a period at the end of that. There's no comma. Uh-huh. He says, your kingdom come. That's why we're going to stop there after those three words, because we want to talk about now what is Jesus saying? What is he really meaning? If this is an outline... If this is to show us the way that we're to enter into the presence of God, there's something Jesus is trying to reveal to us, something within the heart that he's wanting to show us for us to recognize and realize it's important as we continue in this conversation with the Holy God. And he uses the words, your kingdom come. Talk Mm. to me. What do you think? What are your thoughts? Oh, man. This is where I'll, I'll tell you my brain goes immediately, my heart goes immediately, is... Back to the beginning. We already talked about it with Genesis, right? We were given, we, Adam, we are all in Adam, we were given dominion over this earth. And in some ways, it was a failed experiment, if -hmm. I can say it like that, without being sacrilegious. I hope that doesn't sound sacrilegious. But God knew the end from the beginning. He knew how this was going to turn out, right? But 
to give us the key. We weren't ready to take the keys. Mm -hmm. And because there's an enemy going about as a roaring lion back then and now seeking whom he may devour. And he devoured and we turned over the keys. And now the Bible calls the earth or, or he said, the Bible says that Satan is the prince of the power of the air over this earth because we gave him the keys. That dominion and authority. Dominion and authority. And when I think of kingdom, his kingdom, we turned over the lease on this earth to the enemy, but he's using his people to bring back his ways onto this earth, God's rule onto this earth, mm -hmm. his dominion. Mm -hmm. And so he's using us to restore his own dominion to this planet. Yeah, you know, using a military example, because a lot of things in scripture are military um, in terms of analogies, uh, and kingdom is one of those, is when, when Adam and Eve fell in the garden and they gave up that dominion and authority to Satan, in essence what they gave up is territory. Mm -hmm. The territory being this planet. That was now those keys, as you just mentioned, Adam and Eve handed over those keys to Satan. God didn't. Adam and Eve did because God gave them to Adam and Eve. They, in turn, turned and gave it to Satan through this choice that they made. And so literally what, what God is declaring, what Jesus is saying that God is declaring, and the recognition that Jesus is saying we must have in our heart, mm. is the Father now desires to advance on this world and to come back and take the territory that was given away, exactly to your point. And you're right. What's cool about that whole equation is there's a lot of, well, there's a lot of ways God could do that. So totally. Mainly, <laughs> snapping his fingers. Exactly. Like lightning. I mean, it's it could this. be that easy. Yeah. But God says, that's not my plan. Mm -hmm. My plan is, I want to use you. So let me ask you that question. Why do you think God wants to use man to reclaim his yeah. kingdom. Well, okay, to your point, man, Jesus said he was in the beginning, and in Luke, I believe, in the beginning, it says that in red letters, it says, I saw Lucifer fall like lightning, okay? Snap it less than the snap of a finger. It's over. There is no, you know, God pitted against the devil, and I wonder who's going to win yeah. the arm wrestling match. Oh, no, he's coming this way. Yeah, God won. No, there's no fight there, yeah. okay? So to your point, why use, why use us? And and in some ways, I don't want the, to make this so much about the enemy, but there is some level where the ultimate slap in the face to the devil. The devil said from the beginning, "I want to be like God." He says, "No, no, no. I'm going to make man in my image. They're going to be like me, and I'm going to give them dominion and authority over over you. So not only do you get to see me." You get to see a billion people that look just like me. They're built just like me. Three-part triune beings, the whole deal, submitted in love um, to the Father. And we, with him dwelling in us, get to reclaim this mm -hmm. earth. That's an, it's, inter it's an interesting perspective. Yeah, it's, that's, not wh that's not where okay, I was going to go at all. Go and I'm not saying you're wrong. Matter of fact, I, I think it's multilayered. Mm -hmm. and, and I appreciate you sharing that perspective because I... I wasn't considering that, but I absolutely think that's true. But here's where my mind goes, is it's just like God to do it that way. And the reason why is because God is in the business of restoring Redeeming. that yeah. which is seemed useless, that's, that's no longer any good, that's, that's burned to ashes. That, that's his story. That's what he does. That's his gig. That, that's his mm -hmm. M.O., man. That's the way he operates. Is I'm going to take things that are completely destroyed, completely broken, that are worthless, that yeah. the world says is not worth anything, and I'm going to use that for my glory. And so one, one of the things I think he's doing, in addition mm -hmm. to what you talked about, is he's saying, okay, man, you messed this up. Mm -hmm. Guess what? We're going to clean this up together. Yeah. And, and I'm going to let you be one of the primary tools in which that I'm going to use to make it to make it right. Because mm -hmm. he could, in a blink of an eye, change it. And he says, no, I'm going to use that same person that failed, mankind, mm -hmm. in the flesh. I'm going to use that, and, and we're going to see it rise up through my power, through surrendering, through submitting, all those, all those things that you talked about. We're going we're gonna to watch that, that person rise up and be redeemed. And he said, I'm going to start with my son. My, son, my son's going to be the perfect example of that. And now, as Jesus is saying, I want you to model what I'm doing. 
I want you to do what I'm doing because if you model what I'm doing and you do what I'm doing, and by the way, this prayer is a part of it, yeah. the key to unlocking the power and authority, he says, together we can accomplish the purposes of our Father. There's so much wrapped up in those four four words, and I think you're exactly right, that literally this the all of history is about redemption, restoration, restoration of the garden. Yeah. Um, that perfect relationship we had with him. We we see it throughout Scripture. Immediately when you were talking, my, my heart just went right to John 21 where, remember, Peter had denied the Lord three times, and what happened? Usher in condemnation. I'm going back to fishing, mm-hmm. right? And And out he goes to sea, and he begins to fish. But the heart of the Father was what? Even in the face of the ultimate slap in the face, the ultimate I don't even know that man, right? I'm not with him <laughs> type of denial, okay? He goes and invites him to a fish breakfast on the sea and restores him. And we know the story about how, yeah. you know, Peter, do you love me? Peter, do yeah. you love me? Um, follow me. And now, okay, so you ready to go? Well, let's go change the world. Yep. That's, that's, the, that's history. That's redemption. That's restoration. That's the heart of the Father. That is his kingdom. Well, I want you to while while I talk about this next point, I want you to take a look at our comments and see if we have anybody that's that's, that's joining yeah, us live here, and you can look through your iPad and see if there's anybody there that we need to address with with some thoughts and feedback. But I want to share this as a as kind of part two of your kingdom come. So first of all, God is in Jesus is establishing the fact that it's time to restore that which which was lost, and the way that's going to be done is through the advancement of my, of my kingdom, which I'm going to choose to use you is one of my primary tools for that to go forth. Um, So what we need to talk about next then is what does that mean? What does that mean that he's going to use, that he's going to advance his kingdom, and what is behind that, right? When you you think about what's what's behind the kingdom advancing. And I think think one of the things I had to realize as a Christian, Mm -hmm. as a follower of Christ, is, and I still battle it, and I will till I die, is this battle between the flesh and the spirit, that we have a tendency, when we talk about weapons of warfare, mm-hmm. we have a tendency to look at our situation and our circumstance as it presents itself, whatever trial comes at us, right? And, and our natural tendency is to revert back and reflect on what, what tools, weapons, strategies, manipulations do I have at my disposal in order to change this situation or circumstance to my benefit, mm-hmm. to move from a point, point of trial and tr- trouble and chaos and confusion to a point of peace and, in some cases, even blessing and provision. And so we have a tendency to revert to the flesh and go, how can I manipulate this situation that sucks right now? Mm-hmm. How can I manipulate it to my benefit? That's the natural reaction. So I think part of what Jesus is saying when he uses those three words, your kingdom come, is he says you need to realize now, and Paul says this, that you're not of this world. As a, as a follower of Christ, you're a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. And so you need to forget about what the natural is offering you, and you need to realize that what's behind you are the resources of the kingdom of heaven, mm. which, by the way, are limitless. I never thought about it like that. I, I love that. It's the third It's the third thing that happens here. We acknowledge who the Father is. We say he is holy. And then we say, by the way, all the stuff that's going to follow here and the rest of what I'm going to be saying, I'm invoking the kingdom. Like, it, it, I know that there's option A and option B in front of me, but I want the kingdom way, right? I want that way. Let, I want yes. unlimited resources. Yes. As, let let as me give saying. you an example. Let me give you an example. In the natural if you're confronted with a person that's been dead for three days, what are your options? Doc, Dr. Sabora, Do we have options? What are, what are my options here? <laughs> right. What are the treatment plans for this body that's been dead for three days? And you're going to look at me like I'm crazy. Yeah. Your options are you need to go talk to the, you know, the coroner, the mortician, you know, yeah. whatever, and, and prepare the funeral. Yeah. However, if we have the access to the resources of heaven that are limitless, now what are our options? Mm-hmm. Well, we see it unfold in Scripture. Jesus says, Lazarus, come forth from that from that tomb, right? Jesus rises from the dead himself. There's other examples of, of you see a blind man mm-hmm. on the side of the road. Mm-hmm. What are your options? Well, you know, here's a yeah. stick. 
ask, no. ask, yeah, can I give you a ride? Uh, right, yeah. I know you can't. See, right, exactly. In the natural, the options are extremely limited. Yeah. In the, from the kingdom, they're unlimited. So that's what I'm talking about. And now those are the miraculous, right? Those are the mm-hmm. big ones, obviously, that I'm bringing out. But let's bring it down to an even more practical level. What happens when um, you lose a job unexpectedly? That's where I was going, yep. Right? Yep. And that's just a real practical right. example of what happens to people every day. You know, what, what happens when a job just disappears unexpectedly? You know, we, we have a natural reaction. We jump into a, first of all, we immediately probably jump into a place of fear, high anxiety, worry, and then we dive into searching, clawing, trying to find whatever we can to manipulate a situation to benefit us. Right. Versus what a son does, and this is why it's included in this prayer. A son says, you know what? My first reaction should be supernatural, Mm -hmm. not natural. And that is I need to revert to the fact that I am a son of the king of the universe that, that, that created everything and has resources beyond measure. That's where my focus and my energy is going to go. And that's why James says consider it pure joy when you face trials of many kinds. Because what is joy? Joy is a fruit of the Spirit that comes from heaven. And it's, it's, a, kingdom, it's a kingdom concept. Joy yeah. is a kingdom concept. And is independent of circumstance. That's exactly yeah. right. And so that's why James is able to say it. Because he's, he realizes that what's behind us, what Jesus is referring to in this prayer, is the kingdom and the resources of heaven mm-hmm. that are limitless and are not of this world. That God says, here's a cool thing. They're not of this world, but I want to use you to bring them into the world. Absolutely. Come so on now. so giving giving us options that, that we might would never have conceived. Never conceived. And you know what? I love the way the word manipulate. And I started to push back on that because I know that we're not trying to that, that implies some intent, some malicious intent or whatever. But what are the first three uh, letters of that word? Manipulate. Manipulate. It's like our man's way. Yeah. Like, how am I going to carve out my own path, knowing what's in front of me? I know that there's only options one, two, and three. And, yeah, and, and to tap into the resources of heaven, we, we often look at, well, resurrection was an option that seemed off the table, to your point. Healing of a blind man is, was an option that's, that is, that's impossible, Right. But yet we've seen it. You and I personally have yeah. seen that. Um, so oftentimes we look at, of course, that's the miraculous thing, because I can see that that was beautiful. He's now alive or he now can see or he now can hear. But what about when the when the option that's given from heaven that you didn't pr- foresee coming doesn't feel so great mm. or you don't see the that? Huh? Or you don't agree with. Or do you don't agree with. Yeah. Like what about that? God, this is what I want. God says, no, this is the way it's going to be. That's why it's important we go back to the very first part of the prayer because we've been positioned well that says, my God has a perspective that I don't have. And mm-hmm. even though in the moment it may not feel like the right answer because mm-hmm. we think we know what the right answer should be because that's how we pray. It's it's the slot machine thing, right? That's right. Instead of saying, you know what, this is what I want, God. However, I'm going to revert back to phrase one in the prayer that says, you have a perspective that I don't have, and I believe, and I trust that you're a good father mm-hmm. who loves me, that wants what's best for me. It's got to start there. And here's the cool thing, and, and we'll wrap with this. A um, couple things. I was talking to a guy about this concept the other day. You know him. I was at Headwaters. And I was talking okay. to one of the guys there, in, in one of the employees of the company where, where we do a Bible study every week. And we were talking about these concepts. And he goes, man, I, I'll be honest with you. Sometimes I make a mistake and I jump into prayer and I just selfishly kind of pray the things that I want. I go, you know what? You're in good company. You want mm-hmm. to know why? Mm-hmm. Jesus did the same mm-hmm. thing mm-hmm. in the garden before his crucifixion. What did he pray? God, I don't want to do this. I don't want to. Well, that was purely in his heart. He's going, I don't want to have to go through what I know I'm about ready to face. However, back to the phrase one of the Lord's Prayer. Not my will, but your will be done. Why? Because Jesus knew God, his Father, wanted what was best for him. And if that meant dying on a cross, Mm. having all the sins of all mankind, both past, present, and future, placed upon him, and him experiencing separation from his Father for a brief moment, if that's what it took, he said, I'm willing to go through with it. I know you have a second point on that. I just want to point something out here, is that him saying, acknowledging, I don't want to do this, nevertheless, 
is really a, a fancy way of saying of saying your kingdom come. That's exactly right. He's saying, yeah, I don't want to, but your kingdom come. That's that's the overriding factor is your kingdom and the advancement of your kingdom and your purposes and your plans. Here's what I'm going to close with. <clears throat> We've been talking about, you and I, have been talking about the covenant. Mm -hmm. God's covenant with his people, which defined very simply as God's promises for those that are his children. It's God's promises. And we want to experience the promises of God, right? That's what Jesus is really talking about. As we step into prayer, he's saying we're submitting and surrendering ourselves to the fact that we have a God that loves us. And he has already said and he's delivered promises that apply to you and I. And by the way, the promises of God are yes and amen, and they never go away. He can never go back on his own word. So we ultimately, at the end of the day, all of us have a desire to experience the covenant, the promises that God has for his children. And the greatest enemy mm -hmm. to that, the greatest enemy to the promises of God, oftentimes people say, well, it's Satan. No, it's not. Well, it's this, it's that, it's something really diabolical, right? It's something extremely evil. It's really not, and that's the thing about Satan. Because if he presented himself as super evil, people wouldn't buy into it. Right. So this is what he does. Instead of saying, hey, John, here you can experience the promises of God in complete fulfillment, he says, instead, I'm going to sell you something else. Counterfeit. The counterfeit is, is so attractive. Yep that this entire world has bought into it. And it's this. Your plan is the counter to God's promises. Hmm. When we develop and devise a plan that we devise, and we say, God, this is what I want for my life, would you come along and bless this? That becomes oftentimes the greatest barrier to experiencing the promises and covenant of God. And it's so subtle, man. And it's totally. all over our marketing today. It's all over television. Just do it, right? Yeah. If it is to be, it's up to me. It's all yeah. these things. These motivational speakers speak about these things. We even hear it from the pulpit. But the fact is, is God says, no, what I'm asking you to do is to surrender and submit your plan. Mm -hmm. Even to the point of persecution and death. Mm -hmm. the, in order to experience my promises. Our life on this planet, and uh, uh, our life on this planet is about... Our journey to the cross, yeah. Ob our our own obedience to the cross, and what is the cross? The surrender of our plan, so that He might live His life through us. It's the greatest enemy of the, the promises of God, experiencing the promises of God are our own plans. No doubt. Gosh, submit and surrender. The key to walking in in uh, in victory in this in this world. Man. Well, here, here's the thing. I had hoped that this new orientation of this set right here would enable us to be more efficient and we actually got less efficient we got three words in yeah we got three words one episode so i don't know maybe we ought to put the re reconfigure the set again and figure out something that's going to work but well, no hey, i think it's beautiful yeah. let's join us guys let's go three words at a time you through bet. the lord's prayer dive you know? into matthew chapter six you kind of see the pace we're on now and you kind of see the the way we're approaching this and and hopefully you the holy spirit's beginning to reveal to you the things which Jesus is trying to teach us and reveal to us through this through this prayer. So I'm going to challenge you to keep reading. We only got through half of chat, verse 10. <laughs> Throw those three words or half of the verse. Because he now says, mm -hmm. thy will be done um, on, earth. on earth as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? What is Jesus talking about there? Well, it's an expansion and an extension of what we've just been talking about for the last two episodes. So dive into that. Study it. Research it. See what Holy Spirit reveals to you. Join us next week is we'll dive in and explore that a little bit deeper. Hey, thanks for joining us on The Pursuit, and we will see you next time.